said and it's been understood that a devil roams these southern Jersey woods in the dark and out of sight eerie sounds that haunt the night you could hear them if you only would as the museum is nestled in the middle of the Pine Barrens we decided to do an exhibition that would bring to light some of the stories and folklore and life that existed there. It's difficult to talk about the uniqueness of the Pine Barrens and Easy at the same time. It's been recognized, it was recognized in 1978 as a national reserve, setting it apart 1.1 million acres that to this day is relatively well protected. It has been recognized as a UN International Biosphere Reserve. I think there's only something like two or three dozen of those in the whole world. So we approached Tom Kinsella of Stockton University, who is a very knowledgeable on the subject, and we worked in collaboration to bring an exhibition to the Noyes Museum that would um, really educate the viewer and give them a little something that they didn't know before. You can enjoy the Pine Barrens because of the old time stories. You can enjoy the Pine Barrens because of the different towns that grew up in it and around it with very different backgrounds. You can enjoy it because of the relatively pristine environment that still is maintained within the Pines for the history of, of the lost industries, culture and people that were here and are now gone. The exhibition brings together 18 artists who respond to the legends, history, and folklore of the Pine Barrens, um, as well as the ge geographic and geological um, aspects of the Pine Barrens itself. Most people in New Jersey, I would say, know about the Pine Barrens a little bit, and they know about the Jersey Devil at least a little bit. Many people know about the Jersey Devil, but we wanted to tell a little bit more and about the life and stories and history um, based there. There's Peggy Clevenger, the Witch of the Pines. Peggy could transform herself into animals. There are stories about people believing they're being bewitched by Peggy, um, trying to break the curses with pins and photographs or little paintings of Peggy. This was to illustrate the story um, where uh, someone who was cursed by Peggy was um, going to shoot her dead but missed and hit her in the hand and uh, if he had got her, he would have got her good. There's Sammy Buck Guyberson, the fiddler, the dancer. He had a fiddle dance-off contest with the devil. The story gets told in several different ways. Sometimes the devil teaches Sammy songs he'd never known before and later Sammy can play these wondrous songs. Um, the Air Tune is one of those songs. The Devil's Tune is another one of those songs. Other times, in other versions, Sammy beats the devil. I learned of the history of the Pine Barrens uh, and the multiple industries that had existed there. Early settlers looked at the area and saw the timber and thought, there's a resource. The old age homestead's long fallen to the ground In the forest where now bricks are scattered round You can search for the place where the beast was born But all attempts will prove forlorn It's only in your mind it will be found So one of the first industries 
was tree cutting in, in the Pine Barrens. Uh, but that led very quickly to charcoal making, which allowed first iron making to take place, and when they outstripped the ability of bog iron to regenerate, when they found coal in, in Pennsylvania, didn't have to make charcoal, when they found better iron sources, the iron industry began to die and the glass industry sprung up. A very prolific, very uh, dependable industry for South Jersey was the glass bottle making and glassware industry. So we do have works in charcoal, glass, um, paper making and iron. John Mason was a um, tinsmith, I, I, I believe it was, um, from Philadelphia, who lived at the time that he invented the cap for the mason jar along the Mullica River. What his invention with the sealing cap on a glass jar did was allowed the canning industry to take place in kitchens throughout America. Grandma could take vegetables from the garden, prepare them, put them in these mason jars, boil them up, and they'd form a seal, a vacuum seal, and they'd be good for as long as they needed to be good. I think the natural environment of the Pine Barrens lends itself to many different um, expressions um, through many different medium, and that's what we also see here in this exhibition. The people go into the Pine Barrens and look at the natural beauty. They think about the stories that have been told and they're inspired. Our viewers, even from the local area, are finding this information for the first time. Even though they may have hiked through the Pine Barrens and gone canoeing through the Pine Barrens, we're presenting information that uh, they never knew before. The artwork that was created for this exhibition clearly is inspired by the industries, the people, the stories of the pines, and it's wonderful. We worked very hard to tell the most interesting stories and lay a foundation of the Pine Barrens that we thought viewers would um, really embrace. The devil's world.